Okay, you just spawned into a new multiplayer game with your friends, you already adjusted your game audio and motion blur way the heck down, and it's time to start jamming. What's the first thing you do? Friendly fire. Weapon fire inflicted on one's own teammates, by one's own teammates. It's an integral feature in hundreds of games, and it's basically a rite of passage to just check if it's enabled. But believe it or not, this game mechanic is not just for RDM and Grand Theft Auto lobbies, nor is it a result of lazy developers who don't want to remove it. Friendly fire is the key to bringing back the glory days of gaming, the single most important game mechanic in multiplayer gaming, period. And like all my wet dreams, baby, it starts with rope. You leave for two months and come back with this bullshit? Before multiplayer shooters really hit it big, before running your teammates over or flashbanging them on cooldown, there was this. The tether. Now, if you're old enough to remember the tether, you remember that the tether is fucking evil. Older consoles like the Wii couldn't handle rendering too much of the game world at any one given time, so the older, unoptimized games just glued players together, and whoever started moving first could pull the other player with them. The other player is your plaything, and you can manhandle them however you goddamn please. God, what I'd give to be manhandled like that. I don't even write these sex jokes in, they just happen. Holy shit, I need a girlfriend. And according to this graph, with information that I made up, overall rage levels in multiplayer games fell very quickly as this was phased out and replaced with none other than split screen. Now don't look at that, look here. And what game is more synonymous with split screen than hate? Friendly Fire is integral to the Halo experience. Taking the Friendly Fire out of Halo is like taking the dementia out of Joe Biden. These things are intrinsically linked. Think about how much differently you'd play the game without team damage enabled. By golly, is that a teammate in danger I see? Well, not to worry, good chap. Like a good neighbor, a few grenades are there. Boom, you kill the enemy for free and your teammate will be fine. Why even aim with the rockets when shooting in the general direction of an objective will probably secure a kill? Why don't we just stick the plasma grenades to our teammates while we're at it? Have them run into the crowd, like no big deal. No big deal here. Now turn Friendly Fire back on and suddenly, it's not that simple. I need to aim my shots now, make sure I don't snipe my teammates or shoot tank shells randomly. Watch where I'm driving my ATV. This is what gaming historians refer to as the golden era of friendly fire in video games. I mean, look no further than Super Smash Bros. doubles. Without friendly fire, this is an ability spamming mess. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody cares. What the fuck? If it's gonna phase right through my dumbass team in anyways, then guess what? I'm picking bird bitch, foxy, or pyro, and my thumb is never leaving the B button for the entire match. Or screw it, I'll plant a million rocks Rockets all over the place or fireball my way to victory. It's not like there's any downside. Shit. Sorry. Asshole. Now I have to slow down a little bit, use my crowd control and projectiles more sparingly. I need to coordinate with my partner, choose my abilities, find ins and outs. With one button press, I just quadrupled the amount of strategy, skill, and awareness required to compete in Smash doubles. It's no wonder that actual Smash tournaments play with this on. Complexity is what Friendly Fire brings to the table, and it's not limited to multiplayer games either. Halo is again famous for keeping Friendly Fire enabled in every single one of... Okay, what about like Breath of the Wild? With a little bit of work, you can get the Guardians to fight other world bosses for you. Similar to Sleeping With Me, it's a little bit tricky and totally not worth the effort, but ultimately rewards the player for experimenting and playing the game in their own way. Which is the entire point of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. But that's not the only reason Nintendo keeps Friendly Fire on, is it? Take a look at this clip and tell me the real reason why Nintendo is keeping team damage on. Or how about a more serious game? What is team damage contributing here? Stop fucking shooting me! What the fuck is wrong with you? There's a misinput. Misinput. Calm down. You calm the fuck. Now, shockingly, the answer is not just as an annoyance or to punish bad gameplay or to let people troll. There's something much more. What? To answer that question, we gotta first ask what even is friendly fire, like well, what counts? Damaging your teammates is obviously friendly fire, and I said before that pulling them or inhibiting them is also friendly fire, but what about damaging yourself? Like for example, what about cooking your own brain cells alive in a disgusting chemical soup brought on by the three monster energy drinks you have daily? You see, I recently moved abroad temporarily, I am I am not in the United States, I'm out searching for enlightenment and shit. No, 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 I don't start this shit, I had nothing to do with the Israel-Palestine conflict, I had nothing to do with that. And to get through a long, tiring day of mischief making, god damn, I need some caffeine. And don't even get me started on that coffee bullshit. It's way too expensive, takes forever to prepare. The train leaves in two minutes. I need my caffeine right now. Ladies and gentlemen, look no further than gamer sups. If you've been following the channel for a while or tuning into my live streams, you know that I live off of this stuff. 
It's a quick-acting, sugar-free energy drink that, unlike other drinks, doesn't taste like fucking jet fuel, and it also doesn't need a hundred YouTube tutorials to teach people how to get the fucking powder to dissolve. Jesus Christ. It's way cheaper than other energy drinks, quicker to make, and it tastes better than literally all of them. I'm a huge fan of Soda Depressed Pear and Anime Girl Thighs right now. Use code STELLAR for 10% off. Now back to what exactly it is that we're gaining from Team Damage. Let's go back to the timeline real quick, but don't forget that clip I showed you. In 2012, we got CSGO, CSGO 2, new CS game, Counter-Strike Global Offensive 2, new game, Unboxing, Knife Unboxing, Reaction, XQC. <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta get the uh, keywords in for the YouTube algorithm. You guys know how it is. I cannot stand tactical shooters. They are engineered by a team of the world's most elite scientists to be the slowest, most anti-fun, lobotomizing, ball-shrinking jackrabbit games on the planet. Why anyone would subject themselves to the agony and torture of playing one of these day after day is completely beyond me. But it is really fun to kill your teammates in CSGO, so it's like, eh. Like we've been saying, the friendly fire here is so complex that it defines the entire game. Flashbangs, Molotovs, and grenades are really, really useful until you blind and burn your whole team. Look at how narrow these hallways are. They're like this so players can't all rush in at the same time. You have to take it slow or you're gonna hit your- Shit! Counter-Strike was one of the first games to start placing limitations on friendly fire because for every player who effectively works around team damage to make their own matches more enjoyable and complex, there is another player abusing that power. Yo, Crazy. Crazy, can I have that off? This is where people start getting fed up with friendly fire and it became clear that maybe there's other ways to implement it. So boom, deal too much team damage or kill too many friendlies too quickly and you get a competitive ban. I like to call this the beginning of the end. CSGO came out and got really, really popular and people saw what the biggest competitive game at the time was doing and said, okay, friendly fire bad ban everyone. But they didn't even know the whole story! This system works great for competitiveness. But what about for funness? A punishment is necessary, but full-on preventing team damage only breeds a negative sentiment towards it. The automated system can't see nuance and it stops all funny moments in their tracks. So now it's just a question of how do we limit team damage enough to stop trolls while allowing it to retain the complexity it provides. I am a huge fan of this reverse friendly fire thing that Rainbow Six has. You still have to be just as careful as with normal team damage. You get a free team killer too, great job. Uh, unfortunately, that means jack diddly squat, my friends, because the gaming industry chose the boring way. The trend became literally ban all team damagers or take the easy way out and remove all team damage entirely. Slowly over time, we'd come to see less and less team damage in games. Overwatch had none. Fortnite turned it off and I quit playing almost immediately. Destiny 2, Apex Legends, Battlefield 1. <sighs> Every Call of Duty and, of course, Halo Infinite removes friendly fire because the world is doomed and people began to forget why why we allowed team damage in the first place. Well, according to my previous graph of information that I made up, we can see overall gamer rage in multiplayer games was generally pretty low in the 2000s and early 2010s until, whoa. Let me ask you a question. Back in the beginning of the video, why did you shoot your teammate in the head? Even if you were just checking, you knew full well that shooting him in the head would kill him instantly. So why'd you do it? I am afraid of being alone in this cave without my boys, and yet I threw a grenade at them anyways. He doesn't drop loot for me, and yet I blew him into next week. Wait, don't keep that in. Wait, cut that out. This new game, Lethal Company, has friendly fire. So we just want scrap? Like, oh, here's some scrap. Right. Oh, shit, it's And I love it, and I'm gonna make a full video about it, and everything I'm saying still applies, but I recorded most of this script in August, and I was playing BattleBit every day back then, so I'm gonna go talk about that now. Take a look at BattleBit Remastered. This game fucks. And I'm not just saying that because someone recognized me in it. We're gaming. Yo, is that the Stellar Jack? I use your code for gamer subs, bro. Wait, what? Really? <laughs> I just got recognized. <laughs> Are you serious? And I didn't. I still didn't res him. <laughs> <laughs> it should be the gold standard for video games moving forward. No microtransactions. No pointless obsession with realistic graphics. No superfluous bullshit. It's got proximity chat, ragdoll physics. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Take a look at this clip real quick. Contact, contact! Show those commie bastards what we're made of! You're going home to your families, boy! That's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my goddamn life. However, does that look like an environment conducive to direct friendly fire? 
Hell no! That would have been a huge mistake. Being a clusterfuck is like half the enjoyment, and if they added team damage like that, you would have a huge mess of constant team killings, and ultimately players would be forced to slow down and strategize more. Very, very important in some games, but that would be fundamentally impossible in a lobby of 300 people. But that doesn't mean that Battlebit has no friendly fire. Louis? Louis, help! No! No, 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 no! Stop! No! No! <laughs> Drag teammates off a cliff where their screams will never be heard again, pilot a helicopter, and retract the deployment rope before everyone's ready, plunging them into the open air where they will meet their untimely demise. You can deconstruct and blow up their cover. Is blasting take on me at 8,000 decibels through an Xbox 360 microphone team damage? I don't know, but people sure as hell do it. Pilot, where are you taking us? <laughs> All of this is team damage, and none of it goes punished because no one gets upset at it. There is the perfect amount of incentive not to team kill while still leaving plenty of leeway for goofing off. Flashbang your teammates, drive them off a cliff, vote for a goddamn night map and make everyone's eyes bleed. Whether or not the developers intended, players will always try to mess with their teammates. Why? We blow our teammates into next week because it's fun. Deep in every gamer's subconscious is the unobstructed desire to troll. As games have developed increasingly larger competitive scenes and an emphasis on tactical, serious gameplay, we have lost our outlets for letting the dog out. This is why Nintendo keeps friendly fire in. This is why it's integral to games like CS, Magicka, Siege, Deep Rock, Portal, every single party game and all of multiplayer gaming as a whole. It is the only remaining reprieve from the rigid and highly competitive nature of so many games these days. And Friendly Fire reminds us not to fall into the trap of being overly sweaty tryhards and to just enjoy the game. Shoot the shit with your boys, blow them off if you have to, I don't care. Find me one other mechanic that can add complexity and heighten stakes completely on its own while simultaneously offering a relief from rigidity and competitiveness. Look at how much my $20 patrons rucks around and people not want to shoot each other. It doesn't have to be direct friendly fire, but developers, please, I'm, I'm begging you, give your players some way to mess with each other. Team damage is important. Stop removing it. Give players ways to fuck with each other. Also, I moved to Japan. I live in Japan now. Okay, see ya.